who comes to your mind when you hear that word? Because generosity is, is a great word. It's a great word. But who kind of comes to your mind, your mind? Not, I mean, there, Mike, there, I mean, there's so many people that have been generous in my life. You know, I, you know, I talk about um, what my father did. You know, you, you know about my mother dying uh, two days before my junior year at high school. And so, you know, the, the generosity and, uh, that my dad raising me as a 16-year-old kid and my sister six years younger and every day went to work, it was at every one of our events, helped us out with their homework, cooked and cleaned and did everything and at one time complained. That's generosity. I mean, Coach Smith, I wasn't a high school McDonald's All-American. He gave me an opportunity, he gave me a chance to come here and to compete. That's generosity. But, you know, the, the, the word generosity and the, and, and the picture that comes to my mind is my wife. I have never in my life, ever, ever met anybody more generous than her. I have never. The only person that is somewhat close is my son, Elijah. He has my wife's heart. And my wife, Leslie, every day, her heart beats to help people. Her breathing is to serve people. And she will seek it out. She, she lives on it. She thrives on it. And I always kid her. I said, you know, I'm a pretty nice guy. <laughs> but compared to you, I look really mean. Because <laughs> she is. She, she um, I've never in my life met somebody that would put aside their own desires, um, wants on a daily basis to help somebody else out. She will inconvenience herself 100% of the time to put somebody else um, ahead of her. Mm -hmm. And it's just unbelievable. One of the things that I pray about every day, and I pray for this for all of my kids, I say I pray that they would, two things with Leslie. One, that they would have somebody in their life like my wife, mm -hmm. somebody in their life that would care for them that would show them generosity the way that my wife does on a daily basis. And then the second thing I pray is, I pray that my kids have her heart. I pray that this rubs off on Elijah, Gracie, and Micah. That would be unbelievable, you know? And, um, but there's nobody, and, and I say that with conviction. There's, I have, in 49 years of being alive, I've met no one that has been more generous than my wife. It's surprising to me it, it, I don't know if it, 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 it's necessarily surprising. I think it would be surprising to other people. It's how generous our, our players are. Really? Could you explain a little bit more of that? Well, I think, you know, from the outside, they look at the guys that, that are out there on the floor, and they, they look at them, and they think, oh, they're just basketball players. Mm -hmm. They're always on TV. Yeah. They're always noticed, recognized. Um, they're, you know, they're, in some sense, celebrities. And some of them are really, uh, really are celebrities. They really are. But they don't understand that behind that, who they really are, they're just kids, and they have, they show tremendous generosity every day, and it's something that we teach. You know, like in Carolina basketball, um, every time somebody makes a basket, uh, the whole bench stands up and they point towards the passer. We've done that even before I was here. When my uncle Walter was here in the 70s, Coach Smith always put that in our system. And the reason being is, yes, that's great that that person hit a three-pointer or made an unbelievable move and dunk. But what allowed that to happen was the sacrifice and the generosity of that guy that made that pass. They're unbelievable. Um, it goes unnoticed how many times I'll give an example. Last week, there was a kid that, uh, a 15 year old kid that uh, just recently got diagnosed with cancer. And uh, one of the people from the hospital said, You know, it's a kid that loves basketball. Is there any way that you can stop by and just encourage him before his surgery? And so we, I just sent out a team text and said, Look, I'm going to go over there on the weekend. Does anybody want to come? Everybody texted me back. And because of you know, conflict with yeah. tutoring and stuff, but eight guys came with me and just spent 15, 20 minutes over at the hospital uh, about a week and a half ago and just spent time uh, with Evan. And um, it was just, 
they do that stuff all the time. They're, they're, they, they, they would be surprising, not to us, but to the outside public of how generous um, our players are. I might have been on ESPN recently. It was really fascinating about the transcendence of sports. Yeah. And how typically fans can see this as their life. It's almost replacing being in a body, like being in a church body, being in yeah. a close group. Yeah. So fans really embrace the team and live and die for the team. Well, if that's, a, if that's the case, which it is, I think, for a lot of people, how might fans actually appreciate experience young guys out running around doing their best, trying to, and not just freak out? I don't know. You, yeah. you well, I mean, I, I, I've, I've never been around or coached a player that has wanted to miss a shot, has, has wanted to turn the ball over, has wanted to lose has wanted to miss a layup or a dunk, or has wanted not to run the play that was designed in the timeout. They just, they just have it. And um, they're kids. And we all make mistakes. And one of the things that uh, Coach Smith used to always tell us is a mistake is good if you can do four things, uh, recognize it, admit it, learn from it, and grow from it. Mm -hmm. He used to tell us that all the time. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but you know what also um, brings, I think, a connection between the fans and the players is taking time to actually get to know the kids. Now, I know they don't have an opportunity mm -hmm. to go out and have lunch with them right. or dinner and, you know, hang out with them and get to know them that way. But there's other ways to, to find out about kids and their story. You know, there was a kid uh, like, you could say about Garrison Brooks. You know, does anybody know that Garrison Brooks grew up in Auburn, Alabama, and his dad is an assistant coach at Mississippi State, and that there was a pull between coming here and Mississippi State with his dad. And he has a great relationship. His parents are divorced. It was a tough situation coming here because he wanted to come here, but he was also, obviously, he loves his dad. Mm -hmm. You know, just knowing little stories like that. Um, Cole Anthony, I played with his dad three years with the New York Knicks, mm -hmm. and just the relationship that we have built um, over the years really was a huge factor in Cole coming here. Uh, Bryce Johnson, a long time ago, uh, who graduated uh, in 17, in 16, and uh, he lost his mom to cancer. And the connection that we had while he was here was just really beautiful. He was a great kid and just really struggled with the death and missing of his mom and now he's in a place and he's playing overseas in Spain now he's at a place where um, he's at peace of where he is and and what he's doing and so um, if the fans could look past the number right. and look inside that person and get to know him however way they can I think it would be a huge part in the way that they cheer for them, mm -hmm. the way that they root for them, and specifically the way that they pray for them. Mm -hmm. And um, how, many, how many fans pray for our kids? Wow. How many fans pray for uh, Leaky Black, Sterling Manley, Andrew Playtech? Why don't you, uh, you know, substitute the, why did you miss that, or the cheering, right. and pray for them. Pray for their salvation. Pray for them um, to use their talents in a way that honors and glorifies Christ. How would that look if we prayed for them? That would be pretty awesome. That'd be nice, That'd wouldn't be it? Nice. That'd be nice. <laughs>